What is up YouTube? Welcome to the Ego Forge Academy channel. Today I'm gonna give you an update on my system here. Uh, it was a request from Helen from England, a friend of ours, one of our patrons. She asked to see uh, the system here since she's in Guinea-Bissau and she is she wants to do a one of the main crops over there is cashew. She wants to do cashew systems and one of the things that I plant here the most is cashew. So, uh, oh, Helen, check it out. Your friends are here, the horse flies. There you go. <laughs> Bet you miss them. Um, so I'm gonna start with this area because there's something very interesting going on here, which is this. So check this out. We've got this cashew plant. All the, all the cashew plants here were planted by seed, okay, directly by seed. So it was direct, direct sowing. Um, now this row here had, I had three or four cashews that sprouted. Interesting thing is the one that grew the fastest, this is one and a half years old, or not quite one and a, almost one and a half years old, like probably like 16 months. There's another beautiful one here. But there was one right here. It was right here close to this dead castor beans plant. This one was the one that grew the fastest. In six months it was my height, but it died. It was the fastest growing one. It was the most beautiful at the time but it died. It couldn't survive whatever it is that that it, it killed it. The other ones took a bit longer to grow, but they look beautiful, check it out. So this shows the importance of planting an abundance of seeds so that you can choose, or actually it, you're not the, the one who chooses. You're the one who executes the choice that nature has made. So, you know, nature, did not choose that first one. And I could have been mistaken and think, okay, this one is growing the fastest, so that's the best one. But, but I didn't choose that one right away because I knew that I, there was no need to eliminate it yet. You know, the cashew plants, they were like eight meters apart one from another. So there's no, they're not competing for space yet when they're this small. So I'm only going to start selecting them once they actually start fighting for space. <coughs> <clears throat> so this just goes to show the importance of planting a lot of seeds so that you can select the best ones later on. Um, now let's go around to one of the oldest areas so that you can see other cashew plants. Some older cashew that were already on the site before planting and were radically pruned. Now unfortunately the last few years the cashew crop has been pretty bad and the seeds that I've been using to plant they haven't been germinating as much as I'd like them to. So I'm gonna have to start using more seeds. Here's another one, beautiful one. Nice new shoots coming up. We just had a pretty intense rain after, after several months of drought. We had four months, no rain. And surprisingly enough, this uh, area held up. This one is four months old, it was in November and the, the jack beans was pruned two or three times with no rain and it re-sprouted and it's gonna give me seeds right now. This rain was just what I needed in order to, to make sure that it's gonna give me a crop. The Gliricidia <clears throat> was also a big surprise because I, I stuck this cutting here in a dry soil with no rain. It took root, received some 10 millimeters of rain, 
during these four months and it withheld uh, nicely it didn't wane it didn't you know it just just held up completely so that was a uh, pretty exciting pretty excited about glue city here now <clears throat> getting to the oldest parts um, not there yet this one is a new one right on the edge the cashew plants here were cut by the leaf cutters so we're gonna see how they're gonna go this part here I just cleaned up the pineapples took all the ones that died left the ones that have nice suckers many of them died because of fusarium I'm gonna do a nice copper fertilization this year to make sure that they don't they're less prone to fusarium. And I'm gonna take the opportunity to fill in the, the spots that were, uh, that are blank now. You know, there's some gaps now in the, in the planting. I'm gonna fill it up with other stuff. So, uh, lots of organic matter from the pineapple themselves. Now let's check that cashew out over there. That one's already a big plant. Uh, it was already here when I started this plot and there you go I radically pruned it as you can see and now I'm conducting conducing conducting or conducing its canopy uh, to occupy its rightful stratum which is the, emer the I mean it's the high stratum right so it should be above the banana plant so it's gonna open up its canopy right there now this cashew plant might be compromised already because of the because it was old it had been in a very crappy situation for a long time so you can see that you know the the wood doesn't look so good but it's sprouting nicely i'm gonna prune it and see what what i can do with it i still have to take this these extra stems out i just want to maintain this this main one because this is just occupying space without a need of course i sit down here every now and then to admire the forest but i can sit somewhere else um we've got more cashews growing here funnily enough that this is the oldest plot this is um this is already almost two years it's going to complete so it's 20, 20 months, 21 months. And you can see that the cashew plants are not so t tall here as that plot that's... <clears throat> Something went into my throat, into my, my air uh, what, vessels, uh, channels, whatever it is. And this one, you can see that it's not as tall as the other ones that are younger than it so this one is almost two years old the other ones that i showed you earlier were like almost 18 years old so this is one this one is at least five months older and it's not bigger you know probably fertilization there were was a little bit better uh, this one was planted in the middle middle of a severe drought so it lagged behind a bit that goes to show that when a plant is establishing itself, if it doesn't have ideal conditions, it will lag behind and maybe it will even, even stall so much that something that you plant after it will even grow faster, even though conditions eventually change for everybody. So eventually it started raining, but since this buddy had already felt the damage uh, from, the, from the lack of rain, it took longer to recover than the one that was sprouting at the moment so but uh pretty good many cashew plants sprouting all around here's another one the ants are giving a bit of a of a tough time another one here also having a bit of a tough time but now they, they're gonna they're gonna get better I, I left this place a long time without management but now it's uh i'm i'm gradually bringing everything um, up to date <laughs> I am updating all of the systems I, I am actually 
you know, just making sure there's nothing uh, to do. So I'm just uh, going into every plot and getting everything right so that I, uh, so that everything is proper. Anyway, this is it. Helen, there you go. You saw your cashew plants. There are a few other here. And interesting thing is that I'll probably be grafting them soon. And I will be making a video about it. So one of the things that I love to do is to plant the seeds and graft on the spot. Instead of planting a grafted seedling, I much prefer to graft on site. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Hopefully I can still do it. And because it's been a long time since I've grafted stuff. Here's another one. People usually graft them when they're uh, when the plants are younger. I like to graft them the, the bigger so that they're not so dwarf plants. Uh, so that they open up the canopy a bit higher and I can actually uh, take them to their rightful layer. Let's see if we've got anything else around here. Interesting. I have a guava. Oh no, this is this is a small native guava plant that we have here. Passion fruit is going crazy. Nice. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, you can check out our full Lego Forge course. We have 25 lessons available in, divided into five modules. It's free. Uh, it's in our playlist. Here's a link. You can watch it so that you get acquainted with all of the concepts that we use around here. Stratification of species, succession of species, covering the soil, all of that. And you can check it out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the notification bell so that you can, you know, help us with the algorithms. And if you'd like to support the channel, here's a link to our Patreon community. Uh, you can support us there for as little as $7.90. You will get special access to some extra content. You will get to participate in our monthly Q&As and other goodies. So I hope to see you there. And I'll catch you in the next video.